That's one way we can set this up. I think a more logical way to set this up is to do layers for each color. So now that I've defined my pattern, it's what I want to work with, I go over to my Layers palette, double click the name of the current layer, we'll call that color A, and not do anything. We'll add another layer, call that color B. We'll make this color B, select same fill color, and if we go back to our color palette, we see that everything that's selected right now is on the color A layer. And I know that because there's this tiny little blue box here that corresponds to the color here and tells me that there are items on this layer that are selected. If I want to move them to another layer, I click, drag, let go, and now color B is activated. All of the white elements are on that layer and the little box is red because the red corresponds to this red over here. I'll add another layer, call this color C, select same fill color, and do the same thing, drag this little blue box all the way up to color C. I'll deselect everything, and what's great about this is not only can I lock a layer, which will protect me from accidentally editing something on that layer if I need to. I can also hide a layer, so I can hide just a single color. That works for any of them. But even better, I can select everything on a particular layer by holding down Option and clicking this tiny little preview. Click. And now everything on that layer has been selected and nothing on any other layer has been selected. So I can change the color. I can option click next one, change the color, option click, change the color, and I have a whole new color scheme. I'll undo that. We can add another layer to define one repeat. Select our rectangle tool, draw a box around whatever one repeat would be. Now I have this fill. I can't see what's behind it. So I'll click here where the, where the fill is. Select nothing. I'll change the stroke color to contrasting color. And then I'll set a stroke width that will stand out. Made it three points. So now I've defined the repeat. I can hide this because that's not super important right now. We have a pretty color chart now, which is fine if you're able to print this in color or if it's going on the web and you know that you don't have to worry about it looking funny in, in black and white or grayscale. But this isn't going to work for people who don't have color printers or who want to be able to photocopy and enlarge and may not have color as an option. So. We can make this shades of gray, doing the exact same thing that we've been doing all along. Or we can do fill patterns, and those work the same way as swatches. So to get to those, we'll go to Window, Swatch Library, Patterns, Basic Graphics, and then we have dots, lines, and textures, and you can use one or all of them, whatever moves you. We're going to option click on a layer that we want to change. And then making sure that the fill and not the stroke is selected, we can click on a texture, do what we like. I think that one is just fine. And you see it works just like any other swatch. It also adds any swatches that I used to my swatches palette. I can click on another layer, make that black. And now we have a chart that we'll, we'll read absolutely fine in black and white. I'll undo that for now. Close this. And we can talk about adding text to our pattern here. So with the text tool, I'm simply going to place a text cursor anywhere. I can define my legend here. 
color A and duplicate that. And the text tool is activated with the letter T. And shut up my three colors. And then I'll also want to add my row numbers. This chart has 12 active rows and one foundation row, so I'll simply type that out. And you just want to make sure that your text is smaller than a single chart row. Once I have all of that in place, I can select all. But before I do that, I want to click one square and make sure I know how big it is. Up here it says that the height is 0.25 inches and the width is 0.25 inches, which is what we set up. But in case you didn't know, it's good to check. And now we select all our text. Command T to activate the character palette. And then in the letting, go ahead and type point two five space I N. So a quarter of an inch. When you hit hit enter, it'll convert it to points to you and it will spread out that text so it's exactly spaced at the same distance as each row of your chart. Since we have this set up to snap to the grid, it's either going to sit way too tight up against the chart or kind of a little bit too far and it will align with the baseline of each row. So for touching this up ever so slightly, I turn off Snap to Grid. I can click this and just nudge it to where I want it. And I'll do the same with my legend here. And that is how you add text. The final step, once our chart looks just the way we want it to, is to export this for use somewhere else. If you're going to create a web graphic, you can go to File, Save for Web Device, and this tool is fantastic. You can decide how big you want this to be. Set it for 500 pixels. Even if you make it 2,000 pixels, it'll still be high quality because this is Illustrator, which creates vector graphics, so it stays perfect no matter what size. I'm going to set this back to 100%. Down here it tells me the file format, how big the file will be, and how long it takes to download over dial-up. JPEGs are generally slightly bigger than GIFs, which is fine for images, but for simple flat colors like this, GIF is your better choice. It reduces the size quite a bit and it's not going to download much faster. So that would be how I would create a web graphic. can cancel that. If I'm going to use this in a print file, I can do Save As. And I can save it as an Illustrator EPS or a PDF, both of which can generally be used in files like Microsoft Word. And um, InDesign will support actually a native Illustrator file or any of these other files here, EPS or PDF. Additionally, you have the option to export, and that'll let you do all different kinds of file formats, including native Photoshop, if you want to use your chart, chart to mock up a design in Photoshop. So you can go ahead and pick whatever you want, name it, and you will be good to go. So that is creating a simple color work chart in Adobe Illustrator.